Welcome to the educational research section of www.happynumbers.org. Today's video <coughs> will be a brief outline about how to read an empirical research article. And of course, as you know, anytime during the videos, you can put them on pause if you're taking notes or anything like that and turn them back on again or even come back to them. Well, let's take a look then. All right, step one, you should briefly skim the article and you should focus on the title, the abstract, and the major headings. And the abstract should actually give you a, a really good overview of the area of inquiry and who the participants are, the variables involved, and the most salient findings. Now, every abstract may not have exactly those same things in it, <clears throat> but depending on the research uh, study, the abstract should be a very, very concise summary of the research article. And the title should also give you a very good idea about what is going on, what will be going on in the research. And then the second is you have to read the article, and I have up there deep read. And what I mean by deep reading at the high school where I teach when I'm <clears throat> teaching or uh, working with students about, talking about deep reading, I have them with sticky notes, uh, taking notes and putting them on the side of what they're reading and questions that they have or things that are not clear and things that they would like to clear up, unusual vocabulary words that they need to know and things like that. And you want to read for what is the research study about? What was the topic or the focus of the research? How was it conducted? What methods were used? And what were the findings? What were the results? And what did the authors conclude from those results? So you need to give the article a very good read. Now, and if you're sort of new at reading research articles, you'll probably get to the results section, and that'll present a lot of gobbledygook to you. But don't worry about that, because we'll, there'll be a video on that. Uh, actually, that's a very, very easy part of the, uh, of the research to, to understand. But we'll have a video for that, so don't worry about that now. Step three, typical sections found in a research article. There's usually an introduction, although it may not be labeled introduction. It may be the first several paragraphs that you see. And then there'll be something like a literature review or related information. Then there definitely will be a methodology section. And then a results section and a conclusions section. And conclusion section usually will have the limitations of the research and recommendations for future research. So those are basically the typical um, sections found in a research article, and we'll go over each of those sections briefly. All right, the introduction <coughs> section should identify the problem in clear and precise terms. It should give you a very, very good idea what is the problem. It should get, provide you with some background and need where does this uh, particular research come from? What, uh, what theory or model does it come from? And what is the background of it? And what is the need? It should very clearly state the purpose of the research. And if it is an experimental study, then it should state a research hypothesis. If it's not experimental, a research question. And finally, the introduction should also uh, give definitions of any important terms that are considered somewhat esoteric, that are not in the common knowledge. So those are basically the introductory section of a research article. That's what things that you would look for. The second is a review of the related literature. And it should summarize the research that already has been done. It should place the question or the topic in some kind of a historical context. And it should identify trends or changes that have taken place. And it also should give you some idea of the theoretical underpinnings of the study. A review of the literature is not a study-by-study a, a study, study summary. In other words, so-and-so said this, and then so-and-so said that, and so-and-so said this. It actually is really a well-organized, cohesive, expository essay where you are showing your understanding, your in-depth understanding, or the researcher that you is showing their in-depth understanding of the topic that they are researching. So that's the second section, the review of the literature. It may not be labeled review of the literature, but generally there will be a part where there is a review of the literature. 
Third section is your methodology. Now this is a critical section, <clears throat> and it really is a good indication of quality of good research. It should outline how the study was conducted, who were the participants, and it should give relevant demographic information about the participants, what was the setting, what were the data collection procedures that were used, were the, if instruments were used, uh, if they were existing instruments, um, do they have reliability and validity data, if they're non-existing instruments or instruments created by the researcher, how were they created, and what were the data analysis procedures. A well-done methodology section should be like a recipe in a, cook, in a good cookbook. You should be able to pick up the recipe, know exactly what you need, and it should be step by step that if you wanted to replicate the research, it would be a very easy process to replicate it. Next section is the results section, and here the researchers present their findings. They may present them in terms of tables or figures. If it's a qualitative uh, methodology, research methodology, then your data uh, reporting of data will be in narrative form generally. If it's quantitative, then there will be your, you'll have a numerical data, and they may use descriptive and or inferential statistics based on the type of study it is. Again, uh, don't get blown away if they're using inferential statistics. We will show you how to uh, interpret those. And, of course, their data analysis should parallel their research questions. And finally, the conclusions and recommendations section. It may be called discussions or implications, and it generally is the summary of results where salient conclusions are drawn that tie back to the literature review, the practical and theoretical implications. And generally, it includes recommendations for further research, and usually it should discuss the limitations of the study. The researchers' conclusions should obviously logically flow from the findings, and you want to check to see that the researchers do not go beyond their data. They do not overstate their data. Final note, as you're reading, try and evaluate the strengths and weaknesses. Good research is characteristic of good research methodology and good reporting of the research. That's one of the characteristics of good research. Good research methodology and good reporting of it. Good research generally has overall impact on existing knowledge. It in impacts our existing knowledge. It probably increases our existing knowledge. And it has an overall impact on educational practice. Oh, here's a little model that's sort of always been helpful for me. <clears throat> you have on the, here across the top research methodology, and you can have good research methodology or yucky research methodology. And down the side here you have research reporting, and you could have good research reporting and yucky research reporting. And so we get this sort of artificial grid where this box right here is represented by good research methodology and good research reporting, and this is good stuff. This is research that you're interested in reading. Now, you may have where you have yucky research methodology, but it's reported well. Yucky research methodology, but it's reported well. This is not a good deal. This is a bad deal, and you need to be aware, be aware of this. Now, you could have good research methodology, this section down here, bottom left, and yucky reporting, <coughs> pardon me. Now, this may be helpful if it's good research methodology, but the reporting is not that well done. Still, we may be able to trust. So we don't want to necessarily just throw that away, but we need to take, take it with a grain of salt. And then finally, we have yucky research methodology and yucky reporting, and that's a real bad deal. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. All right, so here is, for those of you that are taking the course, here is a research, your research article assignment number two. I want you to read the following research articles and in writing critically evaluate each study using the criteria discussed in the video. Both articles, uh, actually both articles are not on Blackboard. 
but I should have included them in your syllabus if you're in the course. If you're not in the course and you're interested in doing this assignment, you can certainly um, get the research articles online. The Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis has a website. Um, it's not their website, but there is a website that you can print any article ever published in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. It's a beautiful website. So. The uh, article is prompting bar patrons with signs to take free condoms, and it's in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. So read that article and then uh, do a written critique of it according to the outline that we've just discussed. And the second one is Schwartz, No Date, an Experimental Investigation of Bad Karma and its Relationships to Grades of College Students. And that's Schwartz, the Faker Syndrome. Well, okay, so there's your assignment. Thank you very much for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.